chapter 16 in the book of Revelation. We'll be in chapter 16 in the book of Exodus on Sunday. And I've said it has dawned on me like never before because it was just an accident slash a God thing that we're doing these chapter by chapter of Exodus and Revelation. And it's occurred to me that Exodus is the companion book or the guide book really to the book of Revelation. Study the book of Exodus. It'll help you understand the book of Revelation. In fact, in tonight's chapter, at least three times, these plagues are drawn back off what happened already in, in to God's people who were being oppressed by the Egyptians long, long ago. But this brings it down to the end of the age when it's more on a worldwide scale. And I've said before that in the book of Revelation, uh, you, you can find the end several times. We've already come to it a time or two, and we're going to come to the end again tonight. But there's 22 chapters. We're just on chapter 16, so that ain't the end of the book, right? It's just like it's different perspectives on coming down to the end. We had the trumpets, we had the seals, and now we've got the bowls or the vials of the, of the judgments. And it's not like one always follows the other one. It's like uh, they're probably going on at the same time, and it all comes to the end eventually here. So chapter 16... We just had eight verses last week. This is a, a little longer chapter, but chapter 20, uh, 16 has got 21 verses. The chapters often begin in Revelation with John saying, And I saw. Then he's going to describe a vision. This one's going to begin with, And I heard. And I heard a great voice. It was coming out of the temple. And it's about to command the angels to go and do something. So who does the voice do we assume it is? The Lord's, I assume. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials or the bowls of the wrath of God upon the earth. <coughs> so we've got seven of them. I'm going to blast through them in the ninth chapter. Here comes the first one. So the first angel goes out. He went and poured out his vial or bowl upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and a grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. These are the ones that had uh, come to the ultimate and final finality that they had rejected God. They're going to follow the beast. Now here's the first thing we are drawn back off of Egypt. One of the plagues of Egypt was boils. Remember that? So here we are at the end, and the bowls poured out, the vials poured out of the wrath of God, and, and there's a noisome and grievous sore upon the men. Usually in the Bible, when you read the men, it means what? Humans, male and female. I don't know. Maybe it means men here. I, I, I don't know, but all I'm doing is I'm watching the news. You ever do that? Watch the news and makes you think about your Bible? And I, this is from two days ago. We're probably up around 2,000. Now they're making a big deal. Well, the sharks have kind of eclipsed the monkey pox right now. <laughs> they will scare you to death with the sharks. Well, Barb's going to the ocean tomorrow. Darby just came back. Did you see any sharks, Darby? <laughs> you don't think so? They've probably some seen you, though. <laughs> I saw one catch one. You saw one catch one, but thank God it wasn't the shark caught a person, right? This person caught a shark. The other thing in the news right now is the monkey pox. You know, they was riding that one pretty hard for a while, and then the shark attacks came. But uh, they've scared everybody, but they're afraid to say the truth. They're afraid to tell you that you just get a little bit of it, and, and, and every once in a while they'll read what the CD said because they're afraid to say this on TV because in this cancel culture thing, you know, it's like, oh, that ain't politically correct, even if it's the truth. But you get a little bit, and, you know, they're afraid to say it, and, you know... This may not make it on Facebook either. But I'm going to tell you the truth. I mean, two days ago, America was up to like 1,800 cases. And I knew the first part, but I didn't know this part. Guess how many of them were women? Zero! Zero. <laughs> because this is a plague upon the homosexual community. This stuff is coming out of the bathhouses. And the CDC says if you're a homosexual man and you're... It's, it's the L, you know, the LGBTQ, LGBTQ question mark. 
and it's three of the letters. Let me see if I can get it right. It's the it's the gay men, it's the transgendered men, L G B T bisexual men. So it's the B T and the G. It's all limited in the B T and the G. And the CDC says, and here's a public service announcement. The CDC says if you're a homosexual man and you've had multiple partners in the last couple of weeks, you better go get vaccinated and get checked out for the monkey box. And I'm saying, I'm reading the book of Revelation, and I said, you know what? That may be the first vial being poured out. I don't know, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I mean, I'm going to tell you that... Uh, the Bible says, and I'm just going to quote the Bible, Mankind shall not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination to the Lord. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 19 that God destroyed the entire cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and the other cities on the plain, five of them, for this sin that we celebrate and recruit and push in America today. But I'm going to tell you one other thing that a lot of preachers don't tell you either. That if you're a homosexual man and you're guilty of this sin, that's what it is, a sin, I'm going to tell you the truth, that God still loves you in spite of that, just the same as he loves me in spite of my sins. But you have to repent. That means turn from your sins and follow God. You can't, can't have it both ways. So the first plague was a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast who worshipped his image. Then these go pretty fast. The second one comes out. The second angel poured out his vial or bowl upon the sea. And what did it do? It became blood. You hear the echoes from Egypt? The Nile became blood, all the waters become blood. This whole everything becomes blood on the worldwide scale, and that means death. It become as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. Don't have to worry about the shark attacks anymore, they're gone. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. So it looks like the second one was the uh, the salt water blood and the, and the next angel was upon the uh, the fresh waters and they become blood and everything in them died too and what does the angel say verse 5 Lord this ain't right no he didn't say that did he I heard the angel of the waters say thou art righteous O Lord it means God you're right for judging this sin thou art righteous O Lord which art was and shalt be the eternal God you are you are you were, and you always will be. You're right, why? Because you've judged this. You've judged us. And, and here's the point. I, I said this back in the studies of uh, Exodus as we're working through there, too. When you think about it, God didn't have to go through ten plagues and then get the Egyptians to chase them into the Red Sea and then destroy them in the Red Sea. If he'd wanted to, he could have done like Sodom and Gomorrah and just to rain down fire and brimstone, got rid of them right off the bat, and God's people could have went free without any of this. So God has some purpose in that. And one thing is he was showing how wicked these people really were. Their hearts got harder and harder. And every time a plague came down, people had space to repent. God knew they wouldn't. He said that about Pharaoh. He ain't going to repent, but you know, he gave him space. And he reveals just how wicked and far away from God those people are. He's showing their hearts. And I think that's what's happened in these last judgments here upon the earth too. Because, uh, and, and it's only through judgment that we understand how good God's mercy is. Because the rest of the folks look around and say, boy, if it wasn't for the mercy of God, I'd have got in that too. God had mercy on me. Because of the cross of Christ. But those that rejected that, they had nothing but their own judgment. And the angel in verse 5 says, you're righteous, or you're right, God. You're doing the right thing. You're righteous, O Lord, because of this judgment. And then he goes on to verse 6, for, for they have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets. We've been reading about the martyrs that are getting killed in these last days, right? So 
He says, they've killed them, now you've given them blood. You, you know what, they've reaping what they sowed. <laughs> they have given them blood to sing, for they're worthy, they're worthy of this judgment. You realize how many saints and prophets we've killed in America in recent years? We do it in that subtle way. How many of them 50 million abortions would have been saints and prophets? And we've shed the blood. And I heard another out of the altar say, verse 7, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. You're, you're right, they're true and they're righteous. And, and the fourth angel poured out his vial or bowl upon the sun. And power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. That's the news today, ain't it? <laughs> the global heat wave. Which maybe, I don't know. But when we look at stuff with the prophetic eye, sometimes you think, are we seeing the tip of the iceberg? <laughs> Places all over the world, hotter than it's ever been right now, but that's just the beginning of what we're reading in the Bible here. The fourth angel, for his bowl upon the sun, power is given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat. And see, this reveals their heart. To the very end, what are they doing? They're cursing God. They blaspheme the name of God, which has power over these plagues and they repented not to give him glory what if they had repented from their sin and turned from God God said that would have given me glory but God's glory is revealed in the judgment if they won't repent now what's God's perfect will God's perfect will would have been that they all repented mm -hmm. ain't that what Peter writes to us that God's not willing that any should perish but that all would come to repentance through faith. But because God allowed us to have free will, many people, maybe most people, choose to reject the gift of God, which is free salvation and eternal life. And that's what these wicked people have done at the end here. They, they're, they're dying and they're still blaspheming God. They won't repent and give him glory. Verse 10, And the fifth angel poured out his vial or bowl upon the seed of the beast. That's the beast capital, wherever that is. Maybe Jerusalem, I don't know. And his kingdom, the beast kingdom, was full of darkness. Well, this Satan's kingdom's already full of darkness. Ain't it? There's a kingdom of light and a kingdom of darkness. And everybody's a, a citizen of one of those kingdoms. And they gnawed their tongues for pain. I said this last week because I saw it on some TV show that, about poor old Stephen Tyler. I guess he's still alive. He's still got pay, space to repent, the lead singer of Aerosmith who said uh, recently, he said, uh, I hope I have as much fun in hell as I've had getting there. And as we read this, it's like, sorry, Stephen, but it ain't going to be fun. They're gnawing their tongues for pain, and the smoke from their torments goes up forever and ever. It's no hope for them. No, no, no. That's the worst thing about hell. You know, there's no hope. Once you're there, there's no hope of ever getting out of there. And as bad as it gets, you you don't think, well, if I can just, you know, if you if they go if you go to prison, you've got some hope up here. Maybe I'll get paroled one day. Maybe I'll get out. Or you've got the hope that at least I'll die and get out of this place. But once you're in hell, that's forever, and it don't ever get any better. And no hope for it to ever get any better. They gnawed their tongues for pain, verse 11, and they, they did what? When they there? They, they blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores. And they repented not of their deeds. And the sixth angel poured out his vial or bowl upon the great river Euphrates. If it's literally, then we know where that's at, right? Over there in the Middle East. And the heat's so bad that it gets dried up. The water thereof was dried up. That the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Because now we're getting toward the very end in the battle of Armageddon. And everybody's coming and, get, and going to join together where there's been many Old Testament battles. That's going to be the last battlefield it looks. But in the meantime, in his vision here, John says, but, but I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. They weren't frogs, but they were like frogs. <laughs> and they were coming out of the mouths. They come out of the mouth of the unholy trinity. They came out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. There's a lot of people in the world today, they open their mouths and demons come out. 
for they're the spirits of devils. Working miracles. Some people thought they were miracles, but going back to drawing on Exodus again. Moses threw his staff down that turned into a serpent. Pharaoh's magicians threw theirs down that did too. God's stick ate up theirs. <laughs> but the first four or five plagues, if you go back through there, that Moses would do something and they'd do the same thing. They finally got to the point they told Pharaoh, we can't do this anymore. That's the real God. <laughs> Their trickery wasn't working anymore. But, but this deception, it looked like these people were this unholy trinity. They were doing miracles. They had a large segment of the population behind them. Probably, and, and they were not probably, they definitely were worshiping them. And the spirits of devils are working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth. The leadership of the world deceived. And of the whole world. To gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. You reckon that's building up already? I, I don't know. I saw something in the world news last night where Iran may be going to team up with Russia. And China's kind of leaning that way. And I thought, well, now he's got to gather North Korea up. They're our other enemy, right? It's the whole world's going to focus over in that area again. That great day of God Almighty is coming. The, the, he's going to tell us about it in a minute, the Battle of Armageddon. And here mine's in red again. It comes from a quote from Quiet Christ. It, Behold, I come as a thief. A thief breaks into your house when you're not expecting it. And it's definitely an unexpected surprise for those that don't know the Lord. But those who do know the Lord, Thessalonians says, that day will not overtake you like a thief. But be wise. Be watching. Study your Bible. Look at the news. Keep a prophetic eye out. But he'll come as a thief, but... Then he warns us. This is a warning. So he blessed is he that watches. Keep awake and beware. And keeps his garments lest he walk naked and they see his shame. His shame. And that's a spiritual way of saying uh, the way to stay ready is to stay faithful. If you get away from God and you get walking out there in shame again, then you ain't going to be ready. And he gathered them together to a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon, or literally Mount Megiddo, where a lot of these Old Testament Bibles or battles took place. I remember oh, uh, Saddam Hussein back in the 90s <laughs> said, as the mother of all wars, they didn't put up much of a fight, did they? <laughs> but there is the mother of all wars coming on down the pipe here. And the seventh angel poured out his vial, the last one, right, completion, into the air. Verse 17, there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne. Now, if it's coming out of the temple and it's coming out of the throne, we know who's speaking, right? The Lord. And what's the Lord say after the seventh one was poured out? It's done. It's the end of this age. What did the Lord say the last thing when he's on the cross? It is finished. Salvation is available. There's nothing else to do. He's done everything he can. The price is paid. He left it up to people to choose where they want to spend eternity now. But there's a day coming that the end of this age is coming. After that, we'll go into the millennial age, see, but it's done. 18, and there were voices and thunders. This is showing us the very end now. There were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth. Nobody's ever seen an earthquake like this. So mighty an earthquake. Never been nothing like this. So great. And the great city was divided into three parts. Maybe that's Jerusalem. I don't know. Maybe it's Babylon. But And the cities of the nation fell. They're all falling apart. And, and great Babylon, which was the oppressor of God's people in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Spiritual Babylon still going on, see. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And the earthquake was so bad that every island fled away. I guess the tsunamis took care of them. And this part of the country, 
I like to look east and see our mountains. The mountains were not found. That's because I'm earthquake, isn't it? And the very last thing with this bowl, there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven. Now, there was also one of the plagues of Egypt. The plague of hail came down upon the Egyptians, but not on God's people. There fell a, upon men great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. That's a hundred-pound hailstone. Can you imagine that thing hitting a car? You driving down the road? A hundred pounds dropped out of the clouds up there somewhere? And they're called hail stones. And the last thing here was happening is God stoning them. They're all going to be stoned, but not in a good way, right? Every stone was about 100 pounds. And men, what did they do? <laughs> very, I mean, the very last minute, I, I'm, I'm assuming God's grace is still available. But they've gone, they're like Pharaoh. Their hearts just got harder and harder. And the last thing they're doing, they're still blaspheming God as they go out into eternity. Men blaspheme God because of the plague of hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Lord, as we've studied this chapter here tonight, we thank you for it, Lord, as a, a warning, as we read about your future judgments. May it be mindful to us Christians about your wonderful grace, or we'd be in the same boat. And Lord, we pray that uh, some of these folks that are in this boat right now would shift sides and get on the winning side. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.